So we know that patients who have stage one HER2 positive breast cancers are at more than just a minimal risk of disease recurrence. We've seen data from retrospective series of untreated patients that suggest their rates of recurrence are somewhere between 10 to 30 percent. And we knew that we had data from a study we had previously conducted, we called the APT trial, in which patients with tumors that were less than three centimeters and node negative and HER2 positive had a seven-year disease-free survival of 93%. And I think given the low event rate seen in that trial, many physicians had adopted using that regimen, the TH regimen, as an option for patients with stage one HER2 positive cancers. But we were really hoping to find a potentially less toxic treatment option for this patient population. And at the time, we knew that TDM1 was very active amongst patients with metastatic HER2 positive disease. And we knew that when TDM1 was compared to chemotherapy and trastuzumab, it was associated with less toxicity. So we thought it would be a nice agent to consider looking at in a stage one population where hopefully we could achieve very good efficacy but less toxicity than TH. The ATTEMPT trial was a randomized phase two study that was for patients who had stage one HER2 positive disease. They had to be within 90 days of their last breast surgery and they had to have HER2 status that was confirmed upon central testing. They were then randomized in a three to one fashion to a year of TDM1 or to get the TH regimen. And the TH regimen is paclitaxel and trastuzumab given weekly for 12 weeks followed by nine months of trastuzumab. So the attempt trial had co-primary endpoints. One was to look at the three-year disease-free survival in the TDM1 arm, and then also to compare the incidence of clinically relevant toxicities between the two arms. So what we found for the first endpoint, which was the disease-free survival, was that in the TDM1 arm, the three-year disease-free survival was 97.7%. Uh, so patients did very well, and it met our primary endpoint in that the rate was significantly better than we would have predicted, and um, so we were shooting for a 5% event rate or less, and this was significantly better than that. When looking at the clinically relevant toxicity endpoint, we found that actually the rates of clinically relevant toxicities were identical in the TDM1 arm and the TH arm at 46%, so really no difference in the rates of toxicities as we measured them. We did see, though, that there were differences in the toxicity profile. So the TH regimen was associated with more neutropenia, neuropathy, and infusion-related reactions, whereas the TDM1 arm was associated with more thrombocytopenia and elevated liver enzymes. And so I think based on these data, we really have felt that, you know, TDM1 is a highly efficacious regimen in patients with stage 1 HER2 positive disease. But by the toxicity endpoint that we used, we really say that it's very similar in toxicity to the TH regimen when looking at the overall rates of toxicity. But again, there are distinguishing features of each regimen with different toxicity profiles. And so I think one could consider using TDM1 in select patients with stage 1 HER2 positive disease potentially those patients who may be at more risk for the TH-related toxicities, such as neuropathy. What we found in the ATTEMPT trial was that patients, again, did very well with TDM1, but we did find that 24% of patients actually weren't able to complete the full year of TDM1, and those patients actually went on to complete their year of treatment with trastuzumab. And so seeing such a good efficacy, even when a quarter of your patients didn't complete the treatment, makes you think that you may see just as good efficacy with a little less therapy and potentially allow us to reduce our rate of toxicities. And so we're hoping to be able to do a trial where we could look at shorter duration TDM1 and where patients could get you know, somewhere between three to six months of TDM1 and then complete the year of therapy with trastuzumab um, and see if that's potentially a less toxic and highly efficacious treatment option for stage one patients.
We know that a year of TDM1 costs a little more than two times as much as the TH regimen, and so certainly it is more expensive to give a year of TDM1 than to give TH. But I think it's important when we look at financial toxicity that we also balance that with the toxicities our patients are experiencing. And so, you know, while the study did not find that there is a difference in rates of clinically relevant toxicities, there were differences in specific toxicities. And so I think, again, for some patients, potentially patients who have underlying neuropathy, it is a much nicer option from a toxicity standpoint to get TDM1. And I think we're hoping in the future that we can create a shorter duration of TDM1 where we can not only reduce financial toxicity, but also reduce the toxicity patients are experiencing.